Hey everybody, it's Dave Altavilla for HotHardware.com here with a quick look at the Windows 8 Developer Preview that was put out earlier this week by Microsoft for their Build Conference. And we have it installed here on an Asus 15-inch notebook. It's the K53e. It's based on an Intel Core i5-2520M dual-core processor with hyper-threading, so there's four threads of available processing for the OS. 6 gig of DDR3-1333 system memory and an 80 gig Intel SSD as the boot volume and so it does have a little bit more uh, high-end storage subsystem installed for sure um, but a fairly mainstream notebook configuration other than that. Let's go ahead and boot this up and show you how Windows 8 boots and you are going to be impressed. Here we are, we're at the BIOS screen, we are now loading the OS and right about now bang you are on the desktop and you have now booted the windows 8 developer preview let's show you around windows 8 log on and take a look okay so first up this is the windows 8 metro interface you've probably seen this already if you've been following windows 8 at all there's been lots of screenshots around the web of this but uh, it's a very windows phone 7 like look in that you've got this tiled interface um, that can be rearranged and organized into different programs apps utility groups to your liking. We're working with a standard keyboard and mouse. As you can see, I can just drag these icons around, these tiles around, and arrange them any way I like. And down here on the bottom is a uh, sort of scroll bar that you can go ahead and swipe across and see different areas of your desktop where you might have additional programs, apps, utility tiles organized. Again, very touch-centric interface for sure. This is a standard laptop without a touch screen. We're working with a keyboard and mouse here, uh, especially so you can see without having our hands all over the screen in front of the frame here. But again, this is Metro. Um, real nice, quick access, easy access to all of the important software, apps, and utilities in your system that you want to get access to. However, there is a classic view, and this is the Windows 8 desktop and um, sort of the classic desktop view. And you can go ahead over here to the start button on the left-hand side that we're all familiar with. You've got settings, devices, share, search, and then the date and time and uh, Wi-Fi uh, signal indicator right there, as well as battery indicator right there. You know, we're connected to an 802.11 and Wi-Fi network right now. Um, but um, obviously, if we were connected up Ethernet, you'd see another icon in there for that. Hit the Windows button on your keyboard and you're taken back to the Metro interface. And um, here's a quick look at Internet Explorer. Again, this is from the Metro interface. You can also hit this from the classic interface as well. And as you can see, we are able to uh, scroll around you know, pretty easily here. It's actually pretty fast, renders real quick. We're again on an 802.11n wireless connection here, not uh, an Ethernet connection. Right clicking on the desktop brings up this sort of letterbox view where you can see the pages you've been in a, in a sort of a tiled format and we'll go ahead and just pull up a one of our high-res images from the site from IDF and again if we right click on that area now we've got the page we were at before and then that pop window for the image that we were looking at and back to the site as you can see here we've got a uh, red X on uh, one of our ads at Hot Hardware where this is actually a flash based ad Flash is not supported in the IE10 browser for the Metro interface. However, if we go back here and go to the desktop and hit IE10, uh, Flash is actually supported from the classic desktop view. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull up the site again here. And we will quickly see that um, Flash ads are showing on the site. And certainly that pertains to things like uh, Flash video as well. But again, um, some limitations with IE10 in the Metro interface, but again, if you want to go to classic view, you can, of course, have full flash support in this view. And some of the other features that are available in that letterbox view in IE10, if you right click again on the frame, is that the uh, URL bar comes up here. You've got a refresh button. You've got a pin to start button, which actually places a page that you're on in the Metro interface, and you've got forward and back arrows for navigation. Let's go back to the Metro interface, and as you can see, over here is a small tile that we've created that we can just click and come right back to the web page we were on. 
Okay, so Microsoft, of course, bundled a bunch of different apps and utilities in with the Windows 8 Developer Preview. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of those now. This is Paint and Play. It's your basic modern day version of the Paint app on Windows 8. And as you can see, we've got different controls for brush type, size, depth. We get the color palette down here, and we're using a mouse and keyboard to draw on the screen. Of course, if we had a touch-enabled notebook, we could have, of course, drawn the screen with our hands. But uh, you know, you knew that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stock app. Here is uh, the stock real-time stock tracker. Um, plug in a symbol of your choice. We're tracking the Dow, Nasdaq, Microsoft, uh, real-time updates, and over here on the right, market news. Taking a look back, we've got a bunch of games. This is Zero Gravity. Interesting little game based on a sort of gravity puzzle approach. And um, we're scrolling around here using the keyboard to bounce our little space guy off of these different structures. Interesting enough, again, hitting that Windows key on the keyboard brings us back to the home screen. We've got an RSS reader interface right here. Let's just bring that back to the main tiled view. This is the high level tile view from the hothardware.com RSS feed. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of headlines here. If we click on a headline, we're able to see more detail. And if we click again on a story, it takes us to the site that the RSS feed was being drawn from. So pretty good little RSS app there. And near me, I like this one a lot. This is an application based on location services data that it pulls from you and offers you a bunch of suggestions for things to do, places to go, things to see near you. And um, there are a bunch of different categories, adventure, big night out, culture, family time, grab a bite, okay, for restaurants, people watching, all kinds of stuff. And actually pretty cool. You click on, let's click on family time, why not? And you can sort the suggestions by distance or rating. Let's go ahead and pick rating. And it gives us uh, a bunch of options for things to do for the family near our location at the time. So let's say you're traveling with the family, near me will provide some guidance. Sort of like a little uh, tour guide. So pretty cool. And um, finally, let's take a look at the weather app real quick. And uh, obviously you can plug in a location here as well. Anaheim, California is being pulled in right now. Sunny, of course, in Anaheim today. And um, it's actually being pulled in obviously from the Windows 8 developer build configuration. So using the Anaheim zip code, but we could plug in our local zip code and, and pull in our weather obviously as well. So that's a quick look at apps and utilities. What's interesting is that it's not so easy to quit an app. As a matter of fact, Microsoft has more of a concept of suspending apps with Windows 8 than they do actually quitting an app. And if we do Control Alt Delete, you know that favorite keyboard combination, we can bring up the Task Manager. And as you can see here, the Task Manager has come up, Windows 8 Task Manager now, new look. And we've got a bunch of apps right here listed that are either suspended or still running in the background. You can go ahead and right click on an app and end that task as you would you know, in a traditional sense. But really what's happening is these apps are being suspended so that they can be quickly reaccessed by the user. And so reducing the memory footprint or the utilization, the resource utilization footprint of the app by suspending it rather than ending it. Clicking the performance tab, you can see our current resource utilization. CPU, memory, and disk are represented here. Also, Bluetooth, wireless, and ethernet. So performance monitor now has a lot more detailed showing. And uh, as you can see right now, we're actually running about 15% CPU utilization and about a gig and a half of memory. We've got all those apps running right now out of our six gig configuration. And uh, other um, resources aren't really being taxed at all. Wireless and, and, and the disk are, are fairly idle. So that's a quick look at the Windows Task Manager. And interesting um, that, um, again, we're suspending apps rather than killing apps. And um, again, it'll be interesting to see how Microsoft utilizes the classic view and, and gives access to users with the classic desktop view. Because right now, it's really sort of a struggle to get to the feeling of the old Windows, the, the, the classic view that we're all used to seeing with Windows 7. Um, it's definitely there, it's underneath, but Microsoft really is pushing this Metro UI as the main navigation element, the main operational elements 
or Windows 8. And so definitely something to watch as it evolves. Certainly a very bright first effort for the folks at Microsoft with Windows 8. Really, really um, impressive new user interface as well as performance. As you can see, switching between those applications, bringing them up on the fly um, from this tile-based look. Very slick, you know, very quick animations, very quick rendering. And so it'll be interesting to see how, how Windows 8 matures in the future. Stay tuned to hothardware.com for more details, for more updates as we get uh, more hands-on time with Windows 8 and new devices based on Windows 8. I'm Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware. Thanks for stopping by.